With my recent profits and a dip in NEO's price today, I decided to sell another cash secured put. However, I'm not going to use it for a wheel trade because if there's one thing bad about using NEO for a wheel trade, it's the. As I look at the chart for NEO, I see that it's enjoyed some pretty good growth over the last few weeks and months. In fact, with my current NEO holdings, I'm enjoying some pretty good profit based off of the stock appreciation. As I zoom in and take a look at NEO's price over the last two days, I see that it's taken a bit of a dip. So I like NEO Incorporated, and I think their potential for future growth is going to be huge, especially since they're backed by the Chinese government. So this price dip is an opportunity for me to get some shares of stock on sale. As I checked on the interest of NEO stock over time, I see that it's been trending higher and higher over the past 12 months. And a quick check of the headlines and news articles that are available every day, it quickly confirms my suspicion that there's a huge interest in NEO stock. And while NEO Incorporated the company and NEO stock may be climbing higher and higher, it's less than ideal for executing a stock option wheel strategy. In fact, one of the US competitors, Workhorse Group, stock symbol WKHS, just might be the better underlying stock for, to use for a wheel strategy. And I'll share with you why I think that may be the case. First, let me start with a chart for NEO Incorporated, symbol NIO. And we could see it's got a pretty good growth over the last few weeks and months. In fact, as an investor, this stock is acting exactly how I want if I'm doing a buy and hold. Next, I'm going to look at a chart for Workhorse Group, stock symbol WKHS. And so when I compare this to the chart for NEO, what stands out to me is that Workhorse has been trading relatively flat. Now, I'm not saying it doesn't have its highs and lows, but it seems to be centering around the $22 price range. In fact, I'm going to say that it's definitely trading within a channel. So there's an upper boundary and a lower boundary. Let me show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to draw a couple lines so it's easy for you to visualize exactly what I'm talking about. First, I'm going to put in a lower limit line. And then next, I'm going to draw an upper limit line. Hopefully, these lines help you understand the channel that I'm talking about. It seems that the price for Workhorse ranges between these two lines. For example, when the price drops to the red line, the bottom line, it tends to rebound and move towards the green line, the upper limit. And then when the price reaches or gets close to the green line, it dips again. Now, of course, there's no guarantee that the stock price will continue this trend. Because as we know, every day is different in the stock market. But using this price ranging trend, I can use this as a possible play for doing a stock option wheel strategy. Since I'm still producing the option wheel strategy video, I don't expect you to understand each of the six steps that are displayed in this diagram. So until I produce and share that video with you, I'm going to do the next best thing and walk you through an oversimplified version of the wheel strategy. So the first step in a wheel strategy is to pick an underlying stock and then from there, sell a cash secured put. One of the key objectives in this first step is to pick an underlying stock that you want to own because you want the option contract to be exercised so that you end up owning the shares. After you own the shares, the next step is to turn around and sell them as part of a covered call. And when selling the covered call, be sure that the option contract specifies a strike price that is above the cost basis. When the covered call option contract is exercised, your shares will get assigned and you'll receive a cash payment in return for those shares. At that point, you can use that cash as collateral, which will allow you to sell a brand new cash secured put. And then you can repeat the process, selling another cash secured put, collecting the premium, and then turning around and using the shares that you acquired to sell a covered call and collecting more premium. And don't forget, you also make profit from the stock appreciation by setting the strike price above your cost basis. So that was my one minute explanation of an oversimplified option wheel strategy. I believe it provides enough information for you to understand the remainder of this video. Just keep in mind that in the future, I'll be producing a detailed explanation of the option wheel strategy where I explain each of the steps, all of the components and variables that make up the wheel strategy, as well as all of the possible outcomes. Let's first look at doing an option wheel strategy using workhorse symbol WKHS as the underlying stock. I'm going to add those upper and lower limit lines back in because it'll make it easier to visualize and understand how this stock works better for a wheel strategy. So the first step to an option wheel strategy is to sell a cash secured put. And now by using the lower trend line, we can estimate where we think the price will dip to so that we will be successful in selling our cash secured put, but at the same time, maximize the amount of premium we received from selling the option contract. 
Now in this example, we can see that as time has gone by, the actual price channel or range has narrowed somewhat. So to more accurately represent the trading range, I'm going to redraw the upper and lower limit lines. Now with the new upper and lower limit lines in place, let's go ahead and map out our option wheel strategy. First, I'm going to sell a cash secure put, and I'm going to pick a strike price right around here, which is just slightly above the lower limit line. Since we know the price has been dipping to around that area, we have a good chance of this option contract being exercised and being able to acquire those shares. Assuming we're successful and we're able to acquire the shares, we're going to turn around and use those same shares to sell a covered call. And for this, we're going to pick a strike price just below the upper trend line. Because we've seen in the past that once the stock price reaches this line, it tends to drop. So by choosing a strike price for our covered call just below this trend line, we have a good chance of our shares getting assigned. Now obviously there's no guarantee that the workhorse stock price will keep trading in this range. But if it does, it makes it ideal for setting up and executing an option wheel strategy. Next, let's look at NEO Incorporated symbol NIO to see how we might set up an option wheel strategy using this stock. So for planning the option wheel strategy, the first thing I'm going to do is take a look and see if I can set upper and lower limit boundary lines. By drawing these lines, it'll help me identify if there's a consistent high price or low price to the stock, and ideally it'd be both. Now, I'm no artist, I admit that, but as you can see from the trend lines that I've drawn, there is no predictable pattern here. In fact, both trend lines are increasing at different rates, so this makes it extremely difficult, if not impossible, to predict what the lower price might be or an upper price. And because of that uncertainty, it makes it less than ideal to try and execute an option wheel strategy where an underlying stock has an unpredictable trend, such as NEO. Now, don't get me wrong, I love the fact that NEO is trending upwards, so it makes it perfect for a buy and hold type strategy but not so much for trying to execute an option wheel. Because when I look at the stock price, historically where it's been, and try to anticipate where it might go in the future, I really come up empty handed. I have no idea. So with NEO stock trending higher and higher the way that it is, that's great profit from stock appreciation for a longer term buy and hold. But as far as using NEO for a wheel strategy, I'm gonna vote no. Conversely, if we look at Workhorse, or just about any other stock that's trading sideways, you can appreciate the upper and lower limit trend line that form a channel for the stock price to trade within. Now obviously there's no guarantee that the stock price will stay within that channel, but having that past historical information makes it a heck of a lot easier when setting up an option wheel strategy. So if you enjoyed this video or you learned anything from it, do me a great big favor and smash the like button. If you're still watching this video, I just want to say thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And I also want to wish you good luck and lots of success with all of your trades.